marks round two of the confrontation between the executive and the judiciary after 2G it is now FDI in retail. The Supreme Court has expressed concern over the government's FDI policy. In fact, a hearing a PIL, the Apex Court, has given the center three weeks' time to file an affidavit. The Supreme Court has expressed concern over the impact of multi-brand retail FDI will the effect that it's going to have on small traders. The court has said that though it is not a policy maker, policy cannot always be sacrosanct and it should be within constitutional parameters. The Apex Court also wanting to know whether the government's FDI policy has borne any fruit so far. Our associate editor Atir Khan now joins us with more details. Atir, was there anybody from the government's end and did they say anything to the Apex Court today? Well, not really. We know that uh, after it's been more than a month since this uh, FDI was passed in the parliament, but, but the, the Supreme Court has now commented on this. Uh, now the government uh, should take serious note of it since it has come from a constitutional body, though now it has uh, uh, taken a political connotation. Uh, it'd be interesting to see how the government reacts to it and also the reactions which come from the opposition. We know that uh, the Supreme Court has gone to the extent saying that court is not the policy-making body and uh, policies are not sacrosanct, uh, and they should be within the constitutional parameters. It has also expressed concern whether the level playing field will be given to small traders. So this is their main concern, uh, which it has expressed, and, uh, uh, you know, sort of uh, observation has been made in the Apex Court. Atir, the Apex Court has given the centre three weeks' time to respond to this uh, FDI policy. What is the government's thinking on this issue? What exactly will their arguments be like? Well, they'll have to convince the court uh, by 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 uh, giving justifications as to whether um, they actually have uh, FDI. Or, uh, the court has uh, um, raised a question mark whether is it a political gimmick. So it will have to convince the court. Moreover, it will have to convince the court that it will give level playing field to the small traders. Um, as, as the court has commented that all the policies should be within constitutional parameters. Also, Atir, uh, did the petitioner have to say anything about the case? Well, it was a PIL which uh, the court was hearing and we know that uh, uh, now since the court has uh, given time to the government to respond to it, uh, it's interesting to see what uh, their point of view on this issue is. Adir Khan, many thanks for joining us with all those details. We have with us constitutional expert Subhash Kashyap now. Mr. Kashyap, can the court take cognizance of a matter that uh, first the government uh, devised a policy, later it was also passed by parliament. Can they really ask and pull up the government over a policy issue? Well, as the Supreme Court has said, it is not its business to lay down policy. But it can certainly find out if any executive action, any legislative action or any policy is violative of the constitution. If any, and it, in that connection, it can certainly ask questions to find out whether uh, there is any violation of the constitution. Also, Mr. Kashyap, is it in the capacity of the court if it feels that uh, it's violating the basics uh, and the livelihood of small traders can it even strike down a policy like FDI? As, as I said, the basic thing is that the court can look into the policy to find out whether it is violative of any provision of the Constitution or violative of any fundamental right of a, any group of people. So the court is entitled to look into it and uh, declare it ultra-virus if it is uh, violative of the constitutional provisions.